to CNS Focus series of interviews from 12th Asia Pacific Conference on Tobacco or Health from Bali, Indonesia. Globally, almost 38 million young boys and girls between 13 to 15 years of age use tobacco product in smoking uh, or smokeless farms. There are evidence-based tobacco control measures to reduce tobacco among young people. But the tobacco industry leaves no stone unturned to attract the young customers through deceptive tactics including online social media platforms. Thus, it becomes imperative to make the young people aware about these dubious tactics and help them choose life instead of tobacco. Today, we are in a conversation with a noted tobacco control champion, Dr. Baki Freeman, who teaches at the School of Public Health, University of Sydney, and uh, has almost two decades experience of working in the field of tobacco control. Uh, she is an authority on uh, on the uh, potential of internet to circumvent tobacco advertising ban and has done a pioneering, pioneering research on the uh, relevance of social media to tobacco control. So without any further ado, let us hear Baki Freeman on how tobacco industry uses this uh, online social media tools to induce tobacco use. So welcome Baki. As you know, despite strong tobacco control policies, including a um, ban on tobacco advertising, promotion and sponsorship, uh, the tobacco consumption among young people remains high. And so what is the connect that you see between the online social media and tobacco control? The tobacco industry has always been masters of using media to promote its products um, from the very beginnings of television and radio, newspaper. So now the new digital area, they're just doing exactly what they've always done. They're being out front. They're being pioneers in using digital media to um, recruit young people. And it's through very simple things such as paying people who have lots of social media followers to promote their products. So say you see someone who's taking a selfie and there just happens to be a pack of Marlboro in the background. Or, you know, people are at an event that's sponsored by the tobacco industry and the brand will appear in a banner over their heads. And something as basic as they have their own Facebook pages, Twitter accounts, where they promote that they're good corporate citizens, that they're contributing to sustainability and development. And Philip Morris has the gall to say that they're actually working towards a smoke-free future, whereas on the other hand, they're using these channels to promote their products. Are the tools and tactics used by the tobacco industry to uh, not only circumvent tobacco control laws and uh, also to lure young people towards their products. What you have to remember about the tobacco industry is their biggest fear is that smoking will no longer be socially acceptable. Because human beings, we're very much, we're social creatures, we accept social norms. And so if smoking is seen as an unacceptable uh, behavior that's stigmatized, that people don't want to have any part of, that's really bad news for them. So they need to use social media to make it look like, you know what, lots of people still smoke. Smoking is completely acceptable. It's something you do when you're out having fun, when you're bonding with your friends. Um, it's part of everyday life. So that's the kind of the primary message they're trying to communicate through using social media. And it's as simple as things like, uh, let's say they hold a concert, they have a hashtag. They encourage people to post pictures of themselves having a great time at a tobacco industry event. Um, that's really hard for public health to push back against. How do you advertise not smoking at a at an event, for example? So I appreciate the frustration that public health has with this field. There are new emerging tobacco products uh, such as electronic smoking, IQS. How uh, the uh, are these products are impacting youth more and what can be done to prevent it? E-cigarettes or heat not burn products or innovative products, um, you know, they're getting a lot of attention lately. It's a very controversial topic as well. Some people in tobacco control are convinced that these product innovations are the answer to the tobacco control epidemic. Other tobacco control people are quite cautious and say it is yet just another product on the market to addict people or to distract us from to the main game, which is to end cigarette smoking. Um, it's really interesting, the iCost product that you mentioned, uh, it's being marketed in a way that's very reminiscent to me of technology, of you know mobile phones and computers. Uh, you can see the iCost shops, they're usually bright white, very clean, uh, very reminiscent of um, Apple Genius Bars as well. You sort of go in, you have an experience. There's someone there who teaches you how to use the product, things like this. My concern with these products is that 
A lot of people um, either will try them and, conti and you continue to smoke anyway, or it'll be a way to um, get youth to think it's less harmful and then they'll go on to smoke anyway. Um, if it was purely that adults who were smokers who just couldn't quit, had tried everything to quit, and then they used these products and found that they no longer smoked, then I think we, we could probably live with it, but that's not what we're seeing. Um, have you heard of the Juul product out of the US? So it's like, it looks like a little USB that you charge. Um, that product has gone from no users to tens of thousands of users practically overnight. This is the generation that takes up technology quickly, right? And if you add an addictive compound to it, well, it's no wonder we are seeing so many young people getting hooked on this product. It's, it's, I, I'm really concerned about it. You have also tracked and analyzed the social media content uh, promoted by the tobacco industry. So how these have uh, been helpful for the countries, particularly in Asia Pacific regions? It's really important that um, tobacco control advocates include social media monitoring as part of their work. Um, we have known for a long time that keeping track of what the tobacco industry is up to is incredibly important to, to knowing what to do about it. You know, what sort of policies do we need? And so I would urge all tobacco control coalitions, advocates, government departments to invest in social media tracking. And because if you don't know what they're doing, you can't do anything about it, right? So you need to be informed. You, we can't just put our head in the sand and say, oh, internet, it's big and difficult. Um, I would also say I would, you know, governments need to require more of the tobacco industry. They should have to report on what they're doing. They should have to submit an annual report on their tobacco marketing budgets, where that money is being spent, and how they're doing it. Because we are not very good at knowing what they're up to. We usually find out a couple years down the track of what they've done, and we're always chasing after them. So let's try and be more proactive about this so we can implement policy to stop it. I've done some of the sort of initial studies looking at YouTube and Facebook and just did a content analysis of what are the pro-smoking messages on there. And it was part of my PhD and it was really good timing because no one had done this work before. So it's always nice when you're a researcher to get to be the first to do that. And as a result, I think it really opened the eyes up, particularly of um, groups like Siatka, um, who are, have always monitored the tobacco industry, to know they now need to include digital channels. And I've seen a whole body of work now, an explosion of other researchers looking into tracking social media, and governments saying, look, we need to include social mark we need to include social media and digital in our legislation and next month at the um, cop 8 which is the conference of the parties for the WFCTC um, the report for the committee I chaired on tobacco depictions and entertainment media is being presented and that will have a whole list of, of recommendations about policy changes that are needed which should impact this region what more can be done to just uh, protect our youth from uh, get, uh, being trapped by the tobacco industry we actually know pretty well what works in tobacco control we have the WHO FCTC we have the empower framework we know high tobacco taxes, bans on tobacco advertising, smoke-free public places, warning smokers about the dangers of smoking, um, you know, getting rid of all branding on tobacco packs. We have the suite of policies. If every country in the world enacted those policies to the fullest, we would actually see smoking rates drop pretty quickly. The problem is we have governments who are slow to act, who um, are interfered with by the tobacco industry, who you know don't have long-term planning. You know we're always changing presidents and prime ministers and health ministers. It's really hard to get traction. So it's in some ways it's frustrating because we know what works. We just need to get on with it. The tobacco industry target young people. So uh, uh, do you think the uh, youth leadership is very crucial and important for the tobacco control campaign, uh, particularly at the country level, state level, district level, village level? I think one of the most powerful ways to um, frame the message around tobacco control is that it's about preventing a new generation of smokers. You'd be hard pressed to find a politician who wants young people to smoke. Even, even tobacco industry executives can't publicly say that they want young people to smoke. It's just not politically acceptable. So it's involving youth in this, making it a youth issue, a youth development issue, is really smart from uh, a mobilization point of view, from a communications point of view. But equally, I think young people should be really mad. I think they should be enraged that so little has action has resulted to protect them in their future. And they should demand that corporations be held accountable and not be allowed to prey on them. So what's your message uh, for the young people, especially uh, from, from this APAD conference? Sure.
I've been working in tobacco control for 18 years now, and we've had some huge successes. Um, I was part of the campaign effort to get plain packaging of tobacco products in Australia, the first country in the world to do that. But that idea was first raised in 1982. It took almost 30 years to come to fruition. So my message to young people is advocacy is a long game. It's not something that you do for six months and you see a result and you get to move on. Um, you have to persevere. You have to be that sort of, you know, oh, what's the expression? You know, the, the, the duck that just keeps pecking at things and never goes away. Um, and so celebrate the small wins because the big wins don't come along very often. But when they do, it makes the years and years of work all worth it. Thank you so much, Dr. Baki Freeman. Uh, friends, we were listening to Dr. Baki Freeman, a teacher uh, school, at the School of Public Health, University of Sydney, on, on the dubious tactic used by the tobacco industry uh, to lure young people towards the tobacco products. For more updates, please, we welcome to visit CNN's website, www.citizen-news.org.